Hello, starting out solitary, it's Lippy Witch, and this week we were talking about psychic boards and if we use them in our practice. I do have a psychic board, and I'll show you at the end of the video. Um, I will say you can use them. I don't see a problem with them. I have used it mainly to contact the dead, which is usually what you use them for, but you can use them as, in a way like you would use like tarot oracle cards as well. Um, I will say there's a lot of, oh, what's the word? Um, kind of a woo-woo aspect to them where people will feel like they can get haunted or spirits can come out and haunt you <laughs> and do a bunch of the stuff. I don't personally think that's possible, but that's my own opinion and I'm sure other people in the collab have very different opinions. Um, I will say you need to respect your spirit board um, or it's not going to work right for you um, because spirits are generally what are helping you with the spirit board. That being said, um, you have to respect anything that you use in your craft, be it a tool, be it a spirit board, or your decks, um, or imagery of a goddess, because if you don't respect it, why are you using it, <laughs> you know? Um, but the stigma, that was the word I was looking for. There's a lot of stigma about psychic boards and Ouija boards. I think my mother may still have it, but I did have a Ouija board when I was a teenager and I didn't use it too much. I don't connect to the Ouija boards as much as I do with the psychic board. Um, I saw the psychic board I have being used by um, a broom in the moon. Uh, she hasn't made a video in a long time, but you can go there and see how she uses it. She's fantastic at the way she uses it. Um, <clears throat> and that's what inspired me to actually get mine. There's another psychic deck. It's called, uh, I think, the Enchanted... not deck, but uh, um, and the Enchanted board. I'm not 100% on that though. Um, but the one I have, and <laughs> you'll see how much I got it for. <laughs> Uh, I got it at a half price books, which I recommend for anybody looking for really cheap decks or psychic boards or anything like that, because though this was used, and I don't know if you can tell by the box or anything, but it's it's been very well used, but the board is in really, really good condition. Um, oh, it, it comes with a book. <laughs> and it helps you interpret what all the meanings of the board are, which is like extremely helpful because some of the imagery it's like, what exactly is this supposed to mean? Um, and the planchette is this, which I like much better. It, I don't know if you can hear it, but it, it's very smooth and goes, goes across the board a lot easier. Um, than what, say, like the traditional Ouija board planchette would. So, with that being said, I'll show you the board. Um, and it's kind of wonky because it, it's one of those, like, not, it's purposely, like, wiggly like that, but, um, like, you have, you have letters, you have, um, I can't even point it. I mean, you've got some words too. You've got colors, you've got astrology symbols, you've got, um, I think they're technically still called astrology symbols, but more like natal chart symbols, if that makes sense, like planetary symbols. Um, I think there's numbers and there's animals, um, and there's elements. And each one stands for something individualized. Uh, it's it's pretty interesting. So when you ask a question, it may drag you to a spot on the board that you're like, "What is this? What is this? I have no idea." <laughs> like even if it's a yes or no, it'll um, it may take you to like the color blue, <laughs> and then you would look up in the book what it's about and then you would get a better answer from that. Um, again, these boards 
these take time to like get comfortable with and work with. I would recommend doing it alone. Um, unlike the Ouija board where you kind of have to have another person with it or it doesn't work out all that well. Because <laughs> so I think that one is a little bit more pokey <laughs> uh, and less reliable. Whereas this, I feel, is more reliable to get uh, messages through. It's interesting. Um, one personal experience I had, and I had, like I said, a room in the moon do a reading when she was still doing readings. Um, I had just lost my cousin in a murder shortly before I got the reading, and she was able to contact him and was able to do a reading in a way where I knew she wasn't bullshitting. Because, um, you know, I'm, I'm a naturally skeptic person. <laughs> um, it, it was very fascinating, and I felt like I connected with him. And I've also connected with him uh, privately for myself. So, you can get some pretty amazing readings done with, with a psychic board. But like I said, you need to respect anything you work with, be it a psychic board, or your cards, or thing or your candles or whatever because without respecting it why should it work for you the way you want it to so that's a little long but that's it for today if you have any questions leave a comment down below and i'll talk to you later bye